All right, for the last thing, I want to just show you how to use the Lagrangian in sort of a very different context and just show that it kind of works. Let's suppose instead of our simple solution where it's X1 and X1 or uh, food and shelter that we're buying, let's suppose that somebody has hundreds of goods that they can spend their money on. X1, X2, X3. We're going to call all the goods X's all the way to Xn where N is a large number. So this is more like a modern economy where there's tons and tons of choices. Okay. The utility function is now going to be a function of all of these X's. Okay. So it has hundreds of arguments that affect utility in different ways. Our income is still our income and we're going to spend it on all of these goods. And I'm going to use the summation notation. So PI times XI. Remember, I ranges from 1 to N, so that means that you know we expand this out by multiplying. Each term is, we change the I from a, to a number ranging from 1 to N, and then we add all those together. Okay, so this is our budget constraint. This is our utility. And the Lagrangian is our objective. If our objective is to maximize utility, we have that one first. And I'm just going to write x1 and xn and put dashes in the middle to remember they're there. y minus uh, the sum ranging from i equals 1 to n of pi times xi. And this is our Lagrangian. And notice we we couldn't draw this very easily. We would need like tons and tons of graphs for every combination of goods. But we don't need to worry about that with the Lagrangian method, okay? Step one is to set the thing up correctly. Step two is going to be to take the first order conditions. So we have hundreds of first order conditions now to take. We've got to take the partial derivative with respect to x1. And we get that the marginal utility with respect to x1 minus lambda times p1. Because remember, this is compactly representing p1 times x1 plus p2 times x2 plus p3 times x3 all the way out to xn and pn. So if we take the derivative with respect to that, we have to find one of these little terms is going to be equal to x1 and the, the no exponent. So we just drop it and uh, keep the things that are multiplying it, which is this Lagrange multiplier lambda and the price p1. And we do that again for x2 x3, xn, and I'll just do dashes to signify that we've done that hundreds of times. We have the marginal utility with respect to xn minus lambda times pn. And then we also have to take the derivative with respect to the Lagrange multiplier, but that's actually pretty easy. There's no exponent on it, and we just have y minus the summation from 1 to n of pi times xi. Then we set all this stuff equal to zero. And what do we have? Well, we've got n plus 1 equations, because we did it n first order conditions for each of those x1 through xn. And then we did the Lagrange multiplier, so n plus 1. And we've got n plus 1 unknown variables, x1 all the way up through xn, and the Lagrange multiplier. So we have a very large system to solve, but we can still solve it. And in general, you know, uh, I can take any two of these uh, equations and divide the equations by each other, and the lambdas fall away, and I get just lots and lots of these marginal rate of substitution from x1 to xn is equal to the price ratio between those two goods. I've run out of space to write the O. Okay, so I can choose however I want to solve the system, and then I'm also going to add, and I'm going to have lots and lots of these kind of, uh, I'm going to end up with n minus 1 of these if I sort of combine x1 with uh, each of the uh, remaining equations, and then I'm going to also have the budget constraint. So I'll have n equations and n unknowns again and I'd solve it that way. And no need to draw graphs this time. 
uh, the Lagrangian method is going to work for us. Okay. So it's the kind of thing that uh, it may be foreign to you. Maybe it's not. It's a powerful tool and it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to using it.